Hi. Today you're in for four riveting stories of cheating and genius revenge. Be sure to watch to the end because they will be the most interesting. Enjoy watching. First story. An unexpected surprise for a cheating wife. I had a feeling she was cheating on me. She was always smiling and laughing as she texted, even though she said it was her mother. She stayed late at work, although when I asked her co-workers, they said she was long gone. When I asked her what was going on, she said it was just their way of joking around with each other. The final straw was when she left for milk at 11.30 at night and didn't come back until two hours later. From experience, I can now advise anyone who suspects their partner of cheating, hire a private investigator. They're damn good at their job and can get evidence that will help later in a divorce. Let's go back to her birthday a few months later. Why do you think I waited so long? First of all, I was gathering enough evidence for my lawyer, looking for a new place to live, etc. And then of course it had to be on her birthday. You see, when I asked her what she wanted this year, she insisted that I had better go out of town with friends, saying she didn't care about work and she didn't want to be reminded that she was getting old. I knew she was up to something and then I found a bottle of champagne and two glasses hidden. So I did what anyone would do. I left, pretending that I was really going out of town with friends. And I called her mother, her father, her sister, and a few of her friends. I told them I wanted to give her a big surprise by sneaking into her room with birthday buzzes and cake. Sounds cool, doesn't it? It was. At 8.30 in the morning, her family and I met outside our house. We, there were about eight people, took the elevator and I asked everyone to be quiet. I opened the apartment, we all went in and crept up to the bedroom. Everyone has buzzes in their mouths, my mom is holding a cake, smiling all over her mouth. So I open the door and we all yell, surprise. But the surprise was for us. My wife was standing in a doggy pose with her lover staring at us as we had sex. Mom missed the cake, my sister screamed, my father started yelling. I pretended to be terrified, and her friends started pushing everyone out of the room, screaming at her. My wife, excuse me, ex-wife was crying and screaming as I could, and my lover was desperately trying to get his pants on as he ran out of the apartment. Needless to say, it was one of the best birthday gifts I ever gave. My wife ended up blaming everyone but herself, blamed her parents for coming unannounced, blamed her sister for being such a bitch, blamed her friends for not telling her about the surprise. All she did was throw things at me and call me names. I loved this woman for two years, and she yelled at me for ruining her relationship with that guy. It's kind of surreal. Second story. A cheetah wanted to go on vacation, but she had an unpleasant surprise waiting for her. My comrade tried to build a relationship with a girl, and she did not ignore him, but would not let him anywhere near her. She kept the image of an unapproachable woman who had to be pursued. Well, by the way, the girl was good looking and the comrade is very excitable. In general, almost a month and a half he showered her different expensive gifts, ran after her until he found out from third parties by pure chance that she only needed from him and that she had sex with some just a friend. So I came up with a revenge plan. Sitting in a cafe, my friend told me that it was decided to spend the new year in Prague at a friend's house. And further on he chose the phrases in such a way that it sounded as uncertainly as possible. For example, not took the tickets for us in business class, but decided that it is necessary to fly in business class, I won't save money and so on. It was hard, but he made it through. The girl took it all for granted that she too was flying with him and how else could it be? She picked out a lot of dresses and even ordered a travel bag. Comrade bravely endured and tried not to laugh. Well, the final, in fact. The day of departure, December 30, they meet at the airport to meet at the airport, not from the city to go there together to, a legend was invented, go to the check-in counter and he takes out only one ticket for himself. To the questioning face and eye flapping, he said, what makes you think you're going to? If you're going, you're only going on a dick to your John. Baba in tears, he went on. She spent two days pounding on him in all messengers and texts, asking for forgiveness, saying she realized everything, etc., and then some other bullshit. After that, he sent her pictures of him, how he had a great vacation, and she blocked him everywhere. Third story, punished my teacher for intimacy with my girlfriend. 
My girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend, was seduced by my teacher. I found out when I went to his office for an exam and they were kissing in the office. I felt insanely bad, something tore inside me, I don't feel anything at all anymore. After that incident, I went off to study and work. The instructor tried to talk to me, but you understand yourself, no one needs those words. At first, having found out my situation, the whole group sided with him. After a week, the whole class knew about it, and I was surprised that absolutely all my friends and acquaintances took my side. Nobody listened to the lecturer, we constantly disrupted his lectures and did nothing for classes, he tolerated only two weeks. He complained to the rector about us, but my friends had some dirt on him, and in the end, the teacher was fired from the institute with a great shame. The only thing that does not suit me is that I do not feel better, I do not feel good. I wish that this man did not find a job at all in our city or in our country. He came to my house and asked me to forgive him, but I didn't listen to him and kicked him out. But that didn't make me feel any better either. Maybe I should have talked to the man, I don't know. And the girl dropped out of the institute and went home. I never saw her again. Is there any way to quell this spirit of destruction and vengeance inside me because I just can't find my place? Very tired of being like this, but I cannot forgive the teacher, although I probably should, because I'd do worse to myself. I want to say that if anyone has a similar situation, do not take revenge, it will not do any good. Fourth story. A guy can't put his ex-girlfriend in her place. Three years ago, I met a guy. He started courting, two months later we started dating. We both live in another country. After two months of the relationship, he went to his home country for two weeks. I was really looking forward to him. He came and everything was fine. After another two months, I name all the dates roughly. I went to my social networking page and found a request in messages from a girl I didn't know. I went in. There were three very long texts written at different times. The message was approximately the following. You ruined my relationship. You will pay for it. If he won't be with me, he won't be with anyone. His family will never acknowledge you, and I will do anything to make you break up. When he came home, we had sex, and then there was a vivid description of all the details of the intercourse. Of course, I let the guy know about it. He said it was his ex-girlfriend and that they had broken up a year ago and that she had been stalking him ever since and writing nasty things to all the girls who appeared on his social media friends. Said that it was all a lie and she just wants to break us up and that I should not fall for her provocations. So I did. I blocked her everywhere I could. I blocked her, but doubts entered my head. Was it true or was it a lie? And yes, I had acted immorally and gotten into the guy's phone. It turned out to be all true. What's more, this ex wasn't the only one he slept with when he left. There was another girl, and the worst thing that struck me was that he had discussed it all with his father. Their correspondence treated the opposite sex like things. They spoke very unflatteringly about all the girls, writing that they were all of easy virtue. There were intimate photos that they both sent to each other as trophies, including mine. Also, my father kept saying, don't marry her, me. She's not beautiful. You deserve better. She just wants a baby with a handsome boy. To which my boyfriend replied, yeah, she's not worth it. Of course, I was humiliated by this. I confessed to my boyfriend that I had read it. He was remorseful, kept saying that he loved me, that it was before, and he didn't think that way now and would never do that to me. I believed him. I was amazed at my own patience, but I truly loved him and still do. So we lived that way for another year and a half and everything was fine, forgotten. I saw how much he needed me. Underneath that image was actually a sensitive, vulnerable guy. A man can't be so adroitly manipulative as to play for so long. The only thing that occasionally bothered us was the ex-girlfriend's constant attempts to screw things up. He sent him some ambiguous messages where he had to substitute the letters to form a female name. Our name is similar. 
then his friendship, help offers, then something he asks, and so on. Well, even add from myself that I came negative comments under posts in the social network, then checked my nickname, trying to enter under my login, and I went to email. One more thing. This ex-girlfriend is a close friend of his cousin. More precisely, they even live together in the same country as us, but in a different city. I have seen the sister more than once, including babysitting her child. They have stayed with us a couple of times when they came to our town on business. Each time I welcomed them as dear guests. I set a fancy table, no exaggeration, but I tried very hard to please them. And then last summer, this same sister informs me that she is going on a summer vacation to my boyfriend's family home. His family has real estate on the coast of Spain, a week before he and I go. And obviously, she's going to take her friend, which is the same ex-girlfriend. I ask the guy to ask his sister not to take the other girlfriend. He sends me a picture of his and his sister's correspondence, in which the sister agrees not to take her friend. But after a while, it turns out that that ex-girlfriend is going with her after all. I went to her Instagram page to check it out. I don't think it was that bad of me, just checking. And she certainly didn't miss the opportunity to write a heartbreaking post about how this place has been waiting for her, that it is a place of strength, that this city was given to her, and that she will go back there again. And no cheap wind, a me, will change that. I tell the guy about it. He got mad at me for getting on her page, locked himself in his room, and talked to his sister for a long time about something. After that, he texted me, saying that we had to break up. He couldn't do that. Can't fight with his cousin because of me. I can't tell you how I felt. Betrayed, abandoned. Believe me, I didn't even make a scene. Just talking, and I was left feeling guilty for finding out the truth. To fix the situation, I called his sister, where I apologized that it had come to the point that they had quarreled. My sister reassured me that this ex-girlfriend had already forgotten everything, that she had a boyfriend, and that my sister herself would not be prejudiced against me or worse because of their friendship, and that no one would cross paths with anyone. But that's not really true. After all, his parents were supposed to be there at the time. So the ex-girlfriend would be living under the same roof as the boyfriend's parents who, by the way, I haven't met myself yet. You see, I could not tell my sister about his cheating. It would not be right. They ended up going. I watched her page during this period. Not stories, just posts that were discounted regularly. She wore his t-shirts there, was photographed in them, was photographed there in our bed. The only double bed, not hard to guess that we sleep in it. She wrote posts about how her home walls were treating her, even attributed the moon and the weather to herself, as if everything here was waiting for her. Every meaningful place in the city was marked with some vile words, how she was loved here, and kissed here, and called to marry here, etc. I understand that it was all for me to hurt me. She wanted revenge. And here I could not stand it, and again got into the phone to the guy. And the correspondence with my sister was, you said you blocked everything, and I'm being told off again. I don't know what to believe. And his sister really blocked me. We were added as friends. Is they such disrespect? Just take possibly the future mother of my nephews and block me. How so? I asked the guy how so. Turns out they had complained to him, like someone was monitoring their pages. Honestly, I didn't do it. And they gave me all the credit for that X. It turns out. I don't know how to justify myself. I didn't do anything to her. I didn't steal her boyfriend. I didn't write mean things. I didn't respond to the things she wrote to me. She went to his house. Now she sleeps in our bed. What else does a man need? Then again, it turns out that his sister and ex-girlfriend took tickets to Spain this year for the whole month of August, which is the time we always went there. 
They didn't give anyone any notice. They didn't ask. They just put it in front of them. Now we're not going. What's more, when I found out, I went in to see her again, and there was just a bacchanalia of humiliation in my direction. That I was toxic, that I was stupid, that she was better than me at everything, etc. Every barred phrase is directed in my direction, sometimes very, very rude, sometimes even puts up a picture with him, and his sister likes it all. I am offended. It turns out the person who is fighting with me sets up his relatives against me and even encouraged for it. This is my territory. I am the real girl who takes care of him and helps. I got him a job, helped with housing, cooking every day, doing laundry, cleaning, went with him to all the hospitals when he had surgery, and not only, it was me. No cousin, no UX. No parents, of course. We all live in different cities and even countries, but that doesn't negate my efforts. All he suggests I do in this situation is ignore. I've tried, but it doesn't last long. Resentment for betrayal and injustice takes its toll. And I go back again and torment myself with thoughts. And I am desperate. 